Weeks family. Our hearts are breaking. Phyllis died so quickly. And I know you wanted to have the funeral here in the church. And we couldn't. I know that she was well loved. A lot of people have phoned and expressed their condolences to me. And I hope they did the same for you. We can't gather. And that's hard. It's hard because we can't be together with grief. We can't be together to show the love. It's hard during this COVID times. And yet it has to be. So Preston, I know you wanted to have the funeral, uh, the funeral in the church. This is the best that we can do. And for all those people who wish they could have been to the funeral, this is the best we can do. It's a pale second effort, but it's the best that we can do. And if we could do more, we would do more. The sudden and surprising death of Phyllis Weeks has saddened us all. At a time like this, we feel lost. We feel helpless. But we are not without hope. We are not without help. God is with us today. Even as God was Phyllis on Thursday, May 28th. Now, now let us bow our minds and hearts just for a quick moment of prayer. Heavenly Father, you have not made us for the darkness of death. You have made us for life. Without you, we have nothing to hope for. But with you, we have nothing to fear. Speak to us now your words of eternal life. Lift us from the anxiety and the guilt to the light and peace of your presence. And set the glory of your love before us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. From the beginning of time, death has followed us. When death has happened, we have stopped our routine and we ask questions. Questions like why? Why does this have to happen? Is this how there is? Or if you promise just a few short days under the sun and then no more? Or is there something greater than us? Is there something greater in store for us? And when we've asked these questions, we invariably have asked them to God. And God, in His great wisdom, has provided answers. And those answers have been recorded in our Holy Scriptures by men and women of great spiritual sensitivity. And we hear some of them today. From the Psalms we hear, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, he leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. On the eve of his own death, Jesus gathered the people that he loved the very best again. And he said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And when I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. And will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also, and you will know the place where I am going. But Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. 
For some people, death comes as a result of a long, slow, wearing down process. The death is a bit like that of an old tree. Every, every winter has been taking its toll of that tree. Every storm brought down a little piece of it, sometimes whole branches. The tree's been dying gradually. Therefore, no one is very surprised when at last it falls. People who die like that are forewarned. And therefore, they have a chance to set their house in order, to finish up projects, meet with those people that they feel they need to meet with, visit those last places, and say their goodbyes in one form or another. But for others, death comes like a bolt out of the blue. Their deaths resemble the fall of a young tree, apparently in full bloom of health, and yet it's gone. The fall of such a tree comes as a complete surprise. And when people die like that, we're shocked and we're sad. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't seem fair. Plans left undone. Their projects cut short. And everything is thrown into chaos. And we're left with a terrible sense of loss. On Sunday, May 24th, Preston had arrived home after spending some time with his mother. And Phyllis had been doing some work outside and, well, she wasn't feeling quite right. She went outside to sit down and get some air. And she asked Preston to bring her a cold glass of water. Well, Preston fills up a mason jar and puts a couple of ice cubes into it. He brings it out to Phyllis. He turns to go back inside, but before he reached the door, he heard the glass fall to the ground. He thought she had simply dropped her drink, but when he turned around, she was slumped over. He called an ambulance. EMTs resuscitated her. The heart was beating, but the reality was that special thing that made Phyllis Phyllis was gone. And on Thursday, May 28th, at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital, Phyllis Helen Weeks died. That quickly, it was over, and she was gone. A sudden death brings home to us how fleeting life is, how precarious the, the hold that we have on us. We're not made of stone, but very fragile stuff indeed. Life can take a Life can be taken away from us in the twinkling of an eye. It is impossible to describe the feelings that come over a person when they hear of a tragic event like this. The feeling that somehow, in an instant of time, everything has changed. Nothing will ever be quite the same again. Tomorrow will never again be like yesterday. The world seems empty. We feel lost and abandoned. The sudden loss of someone that we love who meant so much to us is a shattering experience as we are forced to come to terms with the fact that those things that we took for granted yesterday will not happen today, tomorrow, or ever. There will be no more trips to Florida, no more bonfires at the camp, no more long talks or chats on the phone or going to do the books for the lunch or bustling around the kitchen here at Winslow trying to get uh, a supper ready for the people who are coming. A sudden death is painful just because it's so sudden. It's painful because it left, leaves so much undone. It leaves so much unsaid. We were not given a chance to say the goodbyes that we would like to have said face to face. Had we known that Phyllis was no longer with us, many of us would have said things to her or, or done things for her to show her, show her just what she meant. Now we will never get a chance to say all those things that were on our heart. We will never get another opportunity to tell Phyllis how much she meant to us. Apologize for past misgivings or misunderstandings that when we look back at them now seem oh so trivial. A 
sudden death is painful because it takes away the future that we thought we had. Death hurts because it's unfair. Phyllis won't be there for any of Cameron's milestones to come or celebrate that 40th wedding anniversary that was coming up in a couple of years. Death is a hard thing for us to face. It's especially hard when it comes so suddenly, without warning. So in this time of grief, I'd like to remind us all of two gifts that God has given us. The first gift that he has given us is the gift of today. Embrace it as precious and beautiful, because that's what it is. That's what today is, precious and beautiful. In James 4 it says, you should know better than to say, today or tomorrow we will go to the city. We will do some business there for a year, make a lot of money. What do you know about tomorrow? How can you be so sure about your life? It is nothing more than a mist that appears only for a little while and then disappears. Phyllis's death is brought home to us in a very real and personal way that we don't know what tomorrow holds for us. It's as though each day God shows up on our doorstep at daybreak with a precious gift. A gift that's beautifully wrapped with a great big bow. And inside that box is another 24 hours. And day after day after day, God shows up with the same gift to the point where we begin to take it for granted as though it will always be there. And my friends, it won't. Events like this ought to make us hug our kids and grandkids just a little tighter. Events like this ought to make us say things like, I love you. I care for you. Can I help you? Thank you. Make us say those kind of things a little bit more frequently and a little bit more passionate. Spend time together as a family. Capture those great moments that, that God sends your way. Don't take the gift of life for granted because the people that you share your life with won't always be there. And on that day, my friends, they'll be missed and missed terribly. The first gift that God has given us is the gift of today. The second gift that God has promised us is the gift of tomorrow. The most famous verse in the Bible is John 3.16. And it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's the good news. That's the gospel. That God so loved the world. That God so loved you. That God so loved Phyllis. That he sent his son to live for us, to die for us, and to live again for us. So that when our life on earth is over, we can follow where Jesus went. He sent his son so that no matter what tragedy may happen today, we will always have a tomorrow. At the Last Supper, Jesus knew that the night of his death was coming. He had no doubt where his life was leading, and he said, I came from the Father. And I've come into this world. Again, I'm leaving this world. And I'm going to the Father. Jesus saw his death not as an end. He saw his death as going to the Father. He saw it as simply going home. He also said that when I leave, I go to prepare a place for you. And that means we have an eternal home to go to. Namely, our Father's house. In our Father's house, there are many rooms. And surely there is one there for Phyllis. Helen Phyllis Weeks, you have walked through the valley of the shadow of death. Phyllis Weeks, may goodness and mercy follow you all the days of your life. In Phyllis Weeks, now that the days of your life are over, may you dwell in the house of the Lord forever. To which I can only say, thanks be to God and Amen. Let's just bow our minds and hearts just for a quick moment of prayer. Today we are saying goodbye to Phyllis with the hope that faith gives to us that she is going to a better place. 
We ask that you bring Phyllis to live with you, where she will know happiness, where she'll know comfort, where she'll know peace, where there is no more pain, uh, pain, where all tears are wiped dry. We ask this in Jesus' name, who taught us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And my friends, today, at the gates of heaven, the bells will ring. And when the bells ring, the angels will stop their praising. And they will ask, O oh Lord, on this day, whom does the bell toll for? And on this day, Phyllis Helen Weeks, it tolls for thee. Now may the grace, the mercy, and the peace of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit abide with each and every one of you this day and forevermore. Amen.